allow errors in a pre-production. Pre-production is key. It's the time where uh, everybody is trying out prototyping together. And uh, if the team knows that they're making a uh, mistake, and it, if they learn by making this mistake, the game will be much better. And the last, uh, last aspect, it's something that we never did yet in Ubisoft India, is that at the end of the production, when you're like a beta or debugging, usually it's the moment where all the tools are stable, uh, the team is at full-fledged, uh, there's a really, really good uh, spirit because you're almost reaching the end. And in Ubisoft, we add a polish phase that is coming after something that could be a candidate master. And we're still just working on improving the quality because things are so efficient that what you do in one hour uh, is, uh, is much better than what you do in one hour in pre-production. So it's not there in uh, Ubisoft India, but it's something that I'd, I'd like to push. And giving time doesn't mean that you're going to be late. It's that this can be planned. You can give time, plan, have buffer, and make sure that uh, people have time to deliver the quality. Control. Quality and control. This uh, is uh, very much linked. We have developed a, a development process in Ubisoft that is shared by many companies. I know EA has something that's similar. Uh, we define and separate the phases of development very clearly. So conception that leads to a very official gate uh, that we call in Ubisoft kickoff, could be called something else. And the gate is a moment where the team is presenting to the board what they did. And the, the output of this meeting is either we kill the game, we go for the next phase, so, uh, or we redo uh, a bit of what is needed in conception, and then we extend the budget. Um, after the kickoff, pre-production happens, so prototyping and uh, trials and errors, this leads to a vertical slice of the game. This is very, very, you know, known. Uh, I think it's Mark Cerny uh, who, uh, like, uh, uh, conceptualized this uh, methodology. So the vertical slice is just an excerpt of your game, but with a level of quality that could be pu publishable. It's very costly to do this, uh, but you create a benchmark that then will make your production extremely fast and easy, uh, easy, like faster and easier. Uh, so this vertical slice, FPP, is again presented to the board, or presented to somebody who's very scary. Uh, and if there's a go, then the team can enter production. After production, I think the, the definitions of the milestones are like, everywhere in, in, uh, in the industry, alpha, beta, debug, etc. And in Ubisoft, for some games, and usually it's for new IP, we do add this polish phases, uh, phase sorry, between debug and release. Editorial control, it's impossible for one team to both try to achieve deadlines and quality, uh, having enough distance with their work so that they can judge themselves. So it's necessary to have an external client, team, um, uh, like some, somebody who will judge the work of your team. Um, it's, yeah, they're called gatekeepers. Uh, third thing that I believe is important is that uh, every single game should go through two playtests during its uh, development. Playtest with your players and you observe your players and you get to understand why nobody can play your game, usually. QC. We have some uh, very strong QC, uh, QA, uh, QA teams in, uh, in India and in Pune. Um, give them power. They, they're usually really good gamers, uh, they know what they're saying, they should, at the end of the production, have the same power than the producer. And creating a game within constraints uh, is not killing creativity. It's the frame is bringing creativity uh, to blossom. I'm not a game designer, so uh, I'm just going to give a uh, few images that uh, help me as a project manager uh, on how design should be thought. Be humble. Uh, when Apple created the iPod, 
I don't think that they were like, okay, let's invent something that's crazy and that like, will revolutionize the way uh, people listen to music and let's do it. No, they were like, oh, the Walkman is great. MP3 player is great. Let's create a better MP3 player. And it's just by the quality of the execution of the ideas that they brought this quality. So I believe much more in the power of, uh, of the quality of the execution rather than in the power of the ideas themselves. I think that a mediocre ID, very well executed, will bring more fun than a great ID uh, mediocrely executed. Similarly, uh, a mistake that most game designers do, and we are doing it in India, is we come with complexity. You want every single feature to be in your game. You don't want to miss out anything. And uh, you believe that uh, your player will understand every single aspect of your game. It's, it's not the case. There's one image that I really love uh, of two vision uh, from uh, these two companies, Yahoo and Google. So 15 years ago, you know, like Yahoo was like top. And, uh, and today, Google clearly took over. And uh, when you look at their uh, the search engine and the way it's presented to the customer, it's actually interesting, is that the more you go in time, the more complex Yahoo is. So the first, the first line is Yahoo, and the line on the bottom is Google. So with years going, Google just simplifies and reduces. And at the same time, Yahoo is just giving you more information. Where do you want to look for information? It's just lost in the first, uh, in the first line. Uh, that's my guess. I hope there's nobody from Yahoo. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Benchmark. The, the Matchbox CEO. I'm, I'm pretty sure he doesn't use his own matches. Or, or maybe he does. I don't know. But like, benchmark your work. Ask yourself, individual level, uh, if what you're doing is really good. And when you think it's good, like, like continue adjusting and polishing. Then benchmark with the people around you. Have your friends playing. Have your team playing. Uh, let them contradict you. And uh, uh, conflict and contradiction uh, brings quality. It's tough to manage, but it's, it's what creates uh, uh, better content. And more important here in India, especially when, like in Ubisoft, we're creating games for the global markets, benchmark internationally. Customers don't care that the game is being developed in India or in, in uh, Canada. Um, play games that are released on the global markets, compare features, uh, look at techniques that are used in uh, countries like Eastern Europe, has got some great rendering guys. Just look at how people are doing it on an international level. And I don't think that the scale of the country should uh, make us feel that we're self-sufficient. It's not the case. This is another method that we use in Ubisoft. It's used widely too, and not just in, uh, in many product development companies. We call it the persona. So the persona is a uh, uh, personification, and bodification of your target audience. You define it very precisely. It's uh, Laura, and she's uh, 14 years old, and she lives in the UK, and she likes this, and her friends do this and this. You give her a name, a picture, you print it for your team, and everybody will keep in mind that they're doing a game for Laura and not for themselves. This persona is a filter um, that you can use when making decisions in design. It's impossible to create a feature that will please everybody. So use your persona. It will allow you to decide that you cannot have a game that's both... Uh, at the same time, extremely uh, easy and hard. It will help you make decisions. It will help you reach um, design or ideas that are much more pure. And I've seen many teams losing this vision, losing their vision because they lose the persona. They start thinking that they're doing the games for themselves. It's a very common mistake of uh, junior uh, game designers. Uh, it's hard to try to think of your audience as somebody who's totally different than uh, who you are, but it's the way you can create uh, very good games. 
and we heard uh, Mark Stax yesterday, you know, he, he was talking to his wife. Like the first game that he was doing, he knew he was doing them for his wife. So you don't make a game for you. Are you bored? Tell me the truth. <laughs> it's actually the end of the presentation, so I'm just going to uh, um, show you a video that is a good example of uh, what we do in Ubisoft in terms of uh, team spirit and in terms of uh, um, quality of content. Thanks a lot for your listening. Can you put some audio up for the video? Audio up, please. Audio up. The beautiful part about this Higher, is it please. touches everything. Uh, entertainment, music, movies, sports. More. Yeah, you can say that. Surtout d'aller chercher... Excuse me? Can you put some more volume, please? So you might have some questions, either on uh, Ubisoft as a global group or what we're doing here in Pune or anything.